Hey everybody, what is going on? This is Brian, we are back again, and I'm starting another new series. Today, we're starting a series called The Volt Series. And in The Volt Series, we're gonna take a look at either samples that I'm given or things that I have down in the basement that I don't have a lot of, but they're gonna dive back into some pores that I probably don't have a bottle of and most likely won't be able to acquire a bottle of anymore. And we're starting off today with a banger. We are looking at the 2008 version of the George T Stag. This comes in 15 years and six months old, and we're looking at 141.8 proof. So this is a hazmat George T Stag from quite some time ago. We got it poured out in the glass already, and I'm not sure if you can tell the color or the legs here. The color's a little unassuming in this glass. I mean, it is a kind of nice golden color, a little, little bit reddish, but it's not overly dark. And if you can tell the legs on here, it's kind of like what I've commented on about King of Kentucky. They're really thick, and they don't seem to have a whole lot of movement on there. And moving over to the nose, man, there, there is so much good to have with this. It has an overabundance of oak. It's slightly charred. It's slightly smoky. There's a little bit of this anise herbal root beer quality, a cola-like quality. There's like a really nice sweet vanilla note that it actually kind of bounces back and forth. Like sometimes it's this anise kind of spice, sometimes it's it's pine, sometimes it's vanilla. All those notes, they mingle really well together. And as you're sniffing, they kind of move through a progression of flavors that kind of, kind of circle each other. A little bit of pepper, a little bit of chili, lots of leather. Lots of dark chocolate, lots of fudgy notes there. And while there's all those notes, there's still definitely a plum note to it. There's a there's a, a dark cherry note to it, more dark chocolate, more leather. It's 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 a clean smelling nose. Um, while all that stuff is going on, I and when I say clean, I mean it's articulate. You can kind of pull the notes apart. Something like maybe the King of Kentucky, it's a little um, it's a little more dark toned, as I would say. And with that, I feel like it leans a lot towards the darker notes. It's it's deep. Barchtown Bourbon Company's Discovery 4 is like that too. I feel like it's very dark toned. Everything from the chocolates to the dark fruits, you know, you kind of have to pull those layers apart. This one, it, it's, it's a little bit cleaner. You can pull some flavors apart a little easier. Let's go ahead and dive into the palette. This is a uh, a really inviting, really enjoyable nose. Man, while it is hot right away, it has this chili pepper type heat that gets you right away. And we're talking about a hazmat George T. Stag. And even though, man, look at these legs now, it's still really drinkable too. It is a little drier and tannic. It has these slightly um, perfumed leather, oak, dark chocolate notes, really, really heavy dark chocolate notes. But yet there's something about it that has a vanilla bean or like a, a French vanilla, silky, sweet vanilla note that's in there as well. Not without pops of berry in there as well. A little bit darker in there. A little bit veiled with the chocolate and the vanilla, but still has some of the fruits there as well. Man, it, it pops again with this, this chili-like spice, but it's quick about it. So I feel like while it has like a, a chili-like heat, it uh, it hits right away, but it dissipates on the palate quickly where unlike regular chili peppers, it might uh, linger with more heat. It does not do that. And it, and it breaks just enough time to, to roll out more of the chocolate, more of the cola, syrupy-like notes. When you're talking about something that is oily, man, this is coating all elements of the palate. This Tootsie Roll-like sweetness, it's deep, oily, thick, as it lingers on the palate. It kind of quickly transitions to a nice kind of tobacco leaf, fresh tobacco, like note, that trails really enjoyably. Still with a little bit of chili-like prickling, a little bit of spice there, but it's like a chocolate-covered cherry truffle that's 
that lingers with tobacco. Really enjoyable. And the thing that's hard about this is I feel like even if I were to describe some of the more modern stags, you might run into some more of this flavor profile. While I think some might be a little bit more cherry forward, I think some are gonna be a little bit more brown sugar forward. I think the one thing that is classically stag to me, or at least the profile that I seem to resonate more with, the bottle from 2014, 2012, um, are how oily and chocolatey and just heavy hitting it is without being so hot that you can't drink it. Maybe sometime soon in the vault, I'll be able to dig into the 2014. Now, while I might not have some of the 2008 in order to compare to it, the 2012 and the 2014 have been some of my favorite years uh, for having this. Again, the 2008 is something that I feel like is so far gone in, in attainability for me now that I likely won't be able to try it again, but it is something enjoyable to bring up. And in the comments below, I'd love to hear, if you're a George T. Stag drinker, what have some of your favorite years been? I'd love to hear whether it's, it's all the way back to 2002 or whether it's some of the more modern ones. Leave me some messages down below. If you all are interested in hearing more things for me to talk about in the vault. If you have a sample you'd like me to try here on the vault, uh, I think later on we'll probably get into some Booker's Rye. We'll probably get into some old Stitzel Weller, um, Gold Vein Weller, uh, maybe some other dusty pours. We'll, we'll explore a whole lot of things in this series and try and do quick rundowns of some of these older pours. And, and I'd love to hear if there's other things that you'd like to hear me talk about or if there's something you don't mind sending me a sample to. I'd love to add it to the stash and bring it out on other episodes of the vault. Thanks so much everybody for tuning in. As always, glad to have you all here. If you all want more content, feel free to tune into the Entry Proof Podcast. That's a podcast that I do with Drew P. Whiskey, and he's also here on YouTube. We're generally live on his channels on Thursday nights. If you want to support the channel, what I'm doing here, what Drew's doing, you can find us at patreon.com slash entryproofpodcast. Until next time, everybody, we'll see you all later.